comfortable win, a clean sheet. Am I dreaming? That was nice. That was just what the doctor ordered. The, the Wolves match folks come up Newcastle fans. Do us a favour and make sure you stick around. But do you think European football is still likely? Definitely. Like, look at where we are. I think we're eighth, I think, at the minute now. There's still a load of few games to go. Welcome back to Rock My Bat Air, you lovely Newcastle fans, and a happy match day to all. Well, as you see in this video, the match will be done, and hopefully it will be a very happy ending to it. I'm actually doing my intro inside because it is windy as hell outside, and I don't fancy anyone having to watch this. Hey, look, it's a home game. We have not won at home since the 16th of December. That is not good enough by any team standards, particularly a team that has been built on the foundation that we have of being very, very good at St. James's Park. It hasn't been pleasant watching in terms of the amount of goals we've been shipping, and there is a lot to work on after a Blackburn performance, which, let's be honest, was not the greatest after an Arsenal performance, which was one of the worst I've seen for a while. Plenty to improve on, but still plenty to play for this season. This is a Wolves team. I didn't get to do a match preview because I've just been so busy. Um, I'm going to apologise, actually, anyone watching this who's a regular watcher of my videos, and I know there's not many of you, uh, I would like to make more videos at the moment. I'm just struggling for time. I work in social media. I do TikToks. I do Facebook for anyone who follows me on the socials. And I've got a million YouTube video ideas, but the editing... So I'm, I'm going to work on that moving forward. I'm going to try and have a better week next week when I'm not gallivanting around London and Blackburn and whatnot. But yeah, I uh, didn't get to do a preview. This is a very good Wolves team coming to St. James's Park. We cannot make any mistake about it. We've got to be on our game to win the football match today. They have threats all over the pitch, but mainly in wide areas. Uh, Sarabia and Neto. Oh, God, Neto. Pedro Neto. What I would do to see him in the black and white stripes, by the way. He is a... ho oh, 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 oh sort of footballer, and I think Gary O'Neill is probably one of the most underrated managers in the Premier League, the job he's do doing there, and the job he did at a, a limited Bournemouth last season as well, really impressed with them, and they're above us, and the league table does not lie, they've been more consistent across the season and results, but if we win the football match today, I genuinely believe, as I've kept saying, there's still a lot to play for, this keeps our season alive. Team News has just landed, as I've landed in the tune, and it is absolutely Lashing down, but I tell you what, he's fucking magic. Don't you fucking know? I'm midfield master. That's right, Joe Willick is back in. I tell you what, this Newcastle team today has the look of last season a midfield three of Bruno Longstaff, Willick, and a midfield front three, well, a forward three of Gordon, Isaac, and Murphy. I'm pretty happy about that. We never saw much of Willick against Blackburn, but let's face it, who was really good against Blackburn? Nobody was, but we got through. Fingers crossed we can get the result today. It's not going to be easy. And I tell you what, if you're anything like me, you've probably spent this week in the pub looking a little bit like this when it comes to reasons why Newcastle's form hasn't improved recently. Well, things are going to get better. There's just a lot of factors affecting why this team is not quite at the races. Well, fix your congestion for one. I mean, the amount of... is something I would have said a while back, but now Newcastle only have... Yeah, they only have one game a week. Well, I mean, there's loads of other things... Don't even get me started on that injury list. I mean, did you see a bench against Black? Yeah, you did see a bench. You did see a bench, Dave. Yeah, yeah, we did actually have a lot of players on the bench that came on. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, only one place to start, really, isn't it? Livermento, Dan Byrne is, again, something I would have said last week until Livermento started against Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do remember them lineups, Dave, don't you? Well, I mean, there could be lots of other factors. We don't know. I mean, the weather, you know, it might be approaching March, but it's pretty cold now. Eddie Howe, is he having problems with his missus? Is him and Mad Dog having issues behind the scenes? Power trips on the touchline? We don't know. Um, don't even get me started on how them corn beef pasties have changed recently. That's got to be affecting the team. Look, there are a lot of factors that I think are going to change, are going to get better. And when I think of them, I'll get back to you. Now, go and get us a pint. Guess what, though? I'm late. 
as I always am, probably don't have time to get me lucky match Red Bull, so I'm going to get up amongst it, get soaking wet in the process, and fingers crossed, fingers really crossed, get three points. So this there. is where digital ticketing really, really gets on my wick, because there's about 15, 20 minutes to kick off now as I'm walking up to the ground. Normally, I'd be fine. I'd be able to walk in last season with my card, tap it, straight in, in my seat, catch the players coming out. Now, there's a very high chance, because I'm walking up this late, I might miss about 10 minutes. Newcastle United sorted out because at the moment for me, yes, it's stopping ticket touts, apparently that's what we told, but this digital ticketing thing just doesn't work. It's broken. Um, and I've got no doubt the line in the pissing down rain is going to be a mile long. It's time, before I get myself in the stadium, you know what it's time for, for some black and white band there. Sturt! 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 This game, in all of the Premier League matches between Newcastle and Wolves, can you believe that 11 have been draws? So if you are, wait, well, by the time you're watching this, you kind of put a bet on. But well, there's a very high chance today, could be a cheeky little draw. Something that Newcastle and me are getting a little bit sick of at home. So I really hope that isn't the case, but this is Mr. Draw Castle United, this football match. The stat that no Newcastle fan wants to hear because we haven't had a clean sheet in so long. Of the 17 Premier League matches between these two sides, both teams have scored in 16. We've beat them 1-0 at home many moons ago and that's the only one where the other side hasn't scored. <sighs> and of all of the Premier League matches at home for Newcastle against Wolves, this one's a bit more positive if you're coming into this game a little bit worried. Newcastle have only ever lost one. And that was under Rafa Benitez 2-1. So, our record at home against these is pretty good. And that's the positivity I'm going to finish on before I get myself up to St. James's Park. It is absolutely brass monkeys. Oh, me lads, you should have seen us gunning. Passing the folks along the road just as they were standing. All the lads and lasses there all the smiling faces gunning along the Scots with road. To say the bleeding races. We went to bleeding races, it was on the 9th of June, 1862 on a summer's afternoon. We took the bus from Bowers, and she was heavy laden. Where we went along Conwood Street, that's on the road to bleeding. Whoa, me lads, you should have seen us gunning, passing the folks along the road, just as they were standing. Half time, weird half that was, really, really weird half. I don't think we played great, but we tuned it up, and I'll take that all day. And the level of comfort in this game a little bit is something I've been craving for a very, very long time now. A very, very long time. Um, not the best by any means I think Alexander Izak we have not seen a fit Alexander Izak now for a very very long time and I think he still looks that way but what we've got in that first half is a bit of luck a bit of luck that we haven't had for a while the way the ball bobbles for the first goal um, the, the second goal the way it obviously slips off the surface and the rain has been absolutely coming down so on to the second half we go we've got changes I'm, I've got no doubt they'll bring on Barnes they'll bring on Miley but my god the thing I'm taking away from that half how much have we missed Joe Willock Picking up them pockets of space down the left-hand side, he's been such a miss and it's a different dimension and that is just something that we had all season last year, him or Joe Linton down that left and we haven't had that for a while and my God has it made a massive difference to our play. On to the second half, let's keep a clean sheet today and let's see this one out and get a much, much needed three points. Come on, oh yeah man. Right, I'm just joined by Jane. Uh, I've st stopped her. It's, it's very cold, so I do appreciate the stopping the speed. It was Jane. First and foremost, what did you think of that game today? Really enjoyed it. Was great to have a clean sheet. Clean sheet. Absolutely, and um, some attacking football. And I loved the third goal. Oh. Tino was fantastic. If that's a lesson to not leave the football match early, I think Tino Livermento has just shown everyone there. You should always stay at the end, shouldn't you? Yes, absolutely. And yeah. Who's your man of the match today? If you had to pick one, I know it's a difficult when we when we played well. It's harder, which is good. Oh, I don't know actually. Um, you stand out. Not particularly, I think they played better as a team, to be mm -hmm. fair. Um, better than um, 
last week anyway, shall yeah. we say. So. It, was, it was nice to see that it wasn't such of a ping-pong match. Yes, um, with regards to the rest of the season, there's been a bit of doom and gloom, especially with the Man City Cup draw, which was a bit heartbreaking in the quarter-final of the FA Cup. Uh-huh. Do you think the season is very much still alive with regards to the European football and whatnot? Yes, no. yes. If we play more like we did today, there's definitely a chance, especially beating those teams in around that position. Definitely. That's why today was important. Absolutely, absolutely. The result was very important. So we are going to get European football, is we what you're are. saying. We are oh. definitely. <laughs> In fact, today, do you think it was a bit of Wolves not playing well, or do you think we did something different to previous matches? To be honest, I think we sat back a bit more. I think we obviously concentrated on our defending because we needed to, um, but it led to knocking out their counter attacks, which is what they're good at. So. Yeah, the game plan works. The game plan worked. Bruno was brilliant in midfield, pulled the strings as always. Played a bit deeper than he has been when he's been, you know, creating everything up front. But his quality just shows through. Mm-hmm. And yourself, sir? Yeah, I mean, Wolves were the better team at the start, and then we got that gate, uh, goal on the counter, mm-hmm. and then then it kind of turned the switch. I think. I think we wanted it a bit more, wanted it more than them. Um, but yeah, I, I think they didn't really turn up. We, we were saying they didn't really want it, did they? Didn't seem like they wanted it much. What is your hopes for the rest of the season? Is there still European football on the horizon for you, or is that a bit of a no-no? Yeah, 100%. We're, what, 7th, 8th yeah, after Champions that? League. I mean, Champ- Champions League is yeah. going to be a bit of a stretch, yeah. but if we can get Europa League, then, oh, you know... I'd be happy with conferences. Oh, yeah. well, I'd be happy with conferences, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, Europa League, so we can build on what we've done this season. Champions League may be a season too early for us with the depth of squad, but Europa League next season would be, would be brilliant. And we've already knocked Man City out one cup this season. Ah, why? Why can't? The, why can't we do it again? That's the positivity I like. And you, are you voicing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly the same. Um, and I think we can go Man City and beat them. Like I say, already beat them, and we so we can do it again. Just joined by my two usuals. I always speak to when I'm stood doing my little post matches. Right, gentlemen. What did we think of that today? Better. Definitely better. But uh, room for improvement. I think. Like I think Wolves were poor. But um, yeah, good. Good win, good three 0 win. And yourself, sir? Yeah, happy with the results. Like I was saying before, I think it's it's as if it's like there's a new style of play. You don't see, you're not seeing the overlap anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll just see going forward in the next couple of games. If like, is there a new style of play coming in? What impressed you? What were you happy to see out there on the pitch today? Um, I'm glad we kept the clean sheet. Could have been right. piss poor at the back. I've went for yes. a while, so um, yeah. I thought Botman looked a little bit more. Yeah, he did. Um, I don't know, we're still giving the ball away cheaply in midfield, I think, and we're, we're lacking that sort of bite in midfield, you know, which we're missing Joe Linton yeah. Yeah, massively, which um, I didn't think I realised how much we were missing him until he hasn't been playing for so long, but, um, but no, it's good, I'm happy with it. One of the match? Ooh, tough one, um, probably Gordon. He never stops, does he? He just runs and runs and runs. I think we could get a Europa League place. I think Champions League is not going to happen. I love Europa League. I'd love to right. some right. Europa Conference League, I'd like to go to Magaluf and watch Newcastle play. <laughs> I think it's still good to keep the, the Europe going just for like the, the amount of games that we'll play, getting used to that type of... Especially going over the years now, as long as we keep the games up, like the more games we'll play, we'll get used to it. And also signing players as well, yeah, I think yeah, European yeah, football is exactly. important. Yeah. Come on, Tyson, isn't it? You've got a European football... You know I mean? think in general now the club as a whole I think it's going to entice any player now it's not the Ashley years anymore so just enjoy <laughs> yeah, it true. you know what I mean just enjoy it that's more like a Newcastle United that is more like it and I tell you what it just feels weird doesn't it coming out of St James's Park clean sheet comfortable win no drama no late injury time madness it, it's great no it is it is and that that felt huge and look did Newcastle pull up any trees today? No, I don't think they did. But what Newcastle were capable of doing today is controlling a football match against, let's have it said, a very, very good coach. I've got no doubts about it. Gary O'Neill, who the manager I really rate, he will not be happy with that performance today from his Wolves lot. They were pretty flat. They started the game quite well, and as soon as we scored, they got the stuff and knocked out of them. But isn't it nice to be going home to watch Match of the Day, to order your Indian, to sink a couple of pints in the strawberry just behind us, or just go and enjoy the rest of your weekend knowing that Newcastle United have won a match by three goals to nil with relative comfort. I cannot wait to hear that. Do, 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 do. I don't care who's on, even if it's Danny Murphy on Match of the Day tonight, I cannot wait to see it. So look, 
what did Newcastle do well today? Well, I think let's get the let's get the things that were in our favour today out the way first. We had Lady Luck on our side. First goal, brilliant counter attack and goal. One pass splits them. Gordon runs the the energy that Bruno, who I'll touch on in a second, showed to make up the ground for Gordon to slip him, and we get the look. Look, <laughs> Bruno is a fantastic footballer, and I'll talk about his performance in a second. But there is one thing we know that he sometimes cannot do: it is strike a football. He instantly looks like that kid who got picked last at school when he goes to strike the ball, and it bobbled, but it bobbled off the defender. And where did it land on the Mister Alexander Isaac's head? That's the bit of luck you sometimes need. And then the second goal, I mean, the weather didn't half open up. I said to the bloke next to me, um, can a Premier League game get called off for a waterlogged pitch? It was lashing down. And the second goal bobbled around, came off the goalkeeper and fell to us nicely. For Anthony Gordon, he couldn't miss. He could not miss. And that's a bit of lady luck. And that is a bit of lady luck that's maybe not been in our favour. You know, these things are all swings and roundabouts. But that put us in a very, very commanding position going into half-time. And I do think that knocked the stuffing out of Wolves. But that's the look out of the way. I'm not going to focus on that in this video. What do I think we did well today? Well, there's one area for me to start, and it's Joe Willock. It is Joe Willock. And do I think Joe Willock had his best game in a Newcastle shirt today? No. What do I think Joe Willock did? By playing in that midfield three, adopting those pockets of space down the left-hand side, that is something that Miley, Bruno and Longstaff have not been able to do all season. Last season, what worked so well was interchanging down the left-hand side with, with Gordon, with Byrne in this case, Joe Linton or Willock. Sometimes both mixing it up, and that happened today. And I thought Joe Willock, the, the areas of space he picked up, it, the, the, the Wolves midfielders, the Wolves defenders did not know where to go, where to stay. Even in the first half, it opened up so much that Dan Byrne was able to run through and miss a pretty good chance because Joe Willock had drifted off to the left to open out their defenders. It was brilliant to see. Joe Willock was always showing up. I thought his work rate was great to say that he's still not firing fully fit, and we've missed it. And I've been saying for a while now that Miley, Bruno and Longstaff are all very, very good players in their own right. But as a midfield three, it's not quite working. Yes, I still think Newcastle are lacking in a def defensive uh, nature. I really, really do. And that's not going to change overnight. I don't think Wolves, I think they did open the lines up at it, it some points in the first half that was a little bit concerning. That's not going to change with Joe Willock coming into the side. But the defensive work down the left rim was good today. But in the other end of the pitch, we had that option that worked so well last season. And let's really, really hope that Joe Willock can remain fit for the rest of the season. Because that is going to be really important. Because we know we don't have Joe Linton. But I thought that was a huge factor in how we attacked and how we really caused most problems at times in the match today. And it was just so nice to see. We weren't so static. We weren't so pending as a midfield. Three. We had movement, we had drive, and yeah, Joe Keeney, yo, da, 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 da. fantastic. Now, what about our midfield uh, Brazilian maestro, Mr. Bruno? Today, I've always said again, I know I keep saying it as if I think I'm a smart ass, I don't. I think the all Newcastle fans made the statement when Bruno is good, we are good. And I thought, you know, I don't think our performance, as I said at the start of this, was, was amazing. But Bruno today was good. He looked like a player who wasn't worried about that yellow card, which I've maybe been concerned he has been in previous weeks. He was just pulling the strings. He's run for that first goal. Anyone who gets to watch that back, I was lucky enough to at half-time, will see that that creates that goal. Because without him busting a lung to overlap Gordon, we don't score in that scenario. Um, absolutely fantastic. Spreading the ball around, making things happen confident in his passing trying things and we know he does that every week but sometimes when it works it really works and he was class he was class um, defensively I thought we were much better today Sven Botman came back in Sven Botman has not quite looked at the races more recently I thought today although Wolves weren't great and he wasn't troubled too much we did I think we looked calmer in defence I thought our, our defensive positioning was quite good today um, we didn't look too susceptible to counter attacks apart from maybe down that right hand side where your heart's always in your mouth a little bit from Dan Byrne but I do think Dan Byrne was protected quite well by Joe Willock today um, Longstaff for me put in his average performance I still don't think Longstaff's really putting in too much of an impressive shift to really of any sort of note at the moment um, 
Willock, well, I've already talked about him. I think he's been brilliant coming back in and he's changed how we set up in that midfield three. We now have one player always wanting to get forward, always wanting to overlap on the left, and we haven't had that for a very long time now. Um, Alexander Izak, I do not think Newcastle have a fully fit Alexander Izak, and I don't know whether we will all season because he's going to continue to be protected. And if I'm being talking about anything negative on this video, it's my worry that. You know, Alexander Izak's track record of staying fit all season is not there. And yes, that win is huge for us to get us a little bit closer to Europe. But Alexander Izak just has to get injured or pull up or something for happened to him. Like we've known time and time again since he's been at this football club and we are without a striker. And that is a massive, massive worry. And I don't I, I don't think Izak looks sharp. He took his goal well, he couldn't really miss. When he's trying to take a player on, when he's trying to get a football a ricochet of a ball he's trying to get to it first I just don't think we are seeing that Isaac, that explosive Isaac that we've seen uh, since he's played for this football club and that will come with time if he's going to keep leading the line Eddie Howe's clearly protecting him by bringing him, off, bringing him off at times in matches but yeah um, hopefully he like, starts to look that little bit sharp because I just don't think we're seeing it Anthony Gordon what can you say about Anthony Gordon he's put in another absolutely marvellous shift he's moved into a strike and roll when Isaac's gone off he played all of the match against Blackburn midweek. The man's my player of the season and he'll continue to be. Um, yeah, good performances all over. I thought Jacob Murphy, his decision-making at times today wasn't great. But again, he, he, he is effective when he wants to be. He does have a bit of pace and he does like to whip a ball in. Um, and I still think across a match, he will contribute a little bit more from an attacking point of view than what Almiron will. So yeah, Jacob Murphy did okay today. Um, Kieran Trippier he went off let's hope that's not too serious but then of course Livermento came on and as I've just said to the people I was speaking to there if Livermento's goal teaches any football fan anything do not leave early what a run and you know as one of the fans who I just spoke to pointed out very very different to Trippier Trippier wants to whip the ball in in every opportunity Livermento will happily cut inside and run at a man and it's such an unusual quality for a fullback but a one as we saw against Man United in the cup and as we saw today with that amazing amazing run just to cap off a great afternoon it's effective and it's something that defenders cannot always deal with um, so yeah that was nice to see him come on. I hope Kieran Trippier's injury is not too bad. Dan Byrne wasn't troubled too much. I think he was exposed at times a little bit today. But again, pretty solid. Dubravka didn't have much to do. And how nice is it for the boys to keep a clean sheet, as I said at the start. He didn't have too much to do at all today. When he was called upon, I thought he was pretty solid. And generally speaking, where does that leave our season? Well, I'm, I'm looking forward, first and foremost, to going on Twitter and not seeing an absolute stream of negativity I would like to hope there isn't after that and that leaves our season alive look we were all flat as pancakes after that cup draw of course we were one game away from Wembley now we've got to go to one of the hardest places in world football to somehow get to Wembley that might be that one ruled out let's be totally honest we'll be down there we'll be supporting the boys all seven six thousand seven thousand of us but that win today leaves our season still very much alive. Don't forget, Newcastle fans, seventh place is a European place. Wolves are above us, and we've just beaten them comfortably. We've got lots of winnable football matches at home to come. We've got Sheffield United at home. Um, you know, Chelsea away is our next away match. That's an interesting one, because I think Chelsea are a little bit better than what they were. But anyone can still go down there, as Leeds proved in the FA Cup, and score goals and win Wolves won there more recently we do have winnable matches coming up that'll give us a bit of momentum I'm very positive after that I don't think that was a polished great performance but that was the first time you could honestly say that it was a comfortable afternoon getting the job done since the 16th of December against Fulham and that is what I said before the match that I wanted that's what I've got and I'm happy enough I'll dissect the video in the, the, the performance in a little bit more detail on another video in the coming days Newcastle fans because I am determined to post a little bit more content than what I have been go and enjoy the rest of your weekends go and enjoy your takeaways or your nights out or your clubbing or your match of the day front, uh, 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 with the blankets on the sofa because Newcastle United have won a football match Newcastle United have kept that season alive to a degree but we've also kept the clean sheet it's not a bad old weekend especially after getting through the cup earlier in the week Go and enjoy yourselves. Oh, you know.